life went on, I began to realize. Uh, you know, I traveled that, around the world promoting my and film. And that's really what we need to be focusing on right now. Fiction is something that happens more in the womb than in the mind. I'm trying to be taken seriously. I'm totally happy to play the fool. I'm a digital guy, and if you live in the tundra, you have to be a digital guy. I grew up in a pastor's home. My father founded Lakewood in 1959, but I never had a desire to be a minister. I went away to college to study television production. I love production and editing and things like that. And I came back from college and spent 17 years working with my mother and father at the church. My father tried to get me up to minister, but I had no desire. I liked being behind the scenes, and really my personality is more quiet and, and more reserved. But when my father died in 1999, and it doesn't make sense, but I just knew I was supposed to do it. That's when I stepped up and started ministering. We didn't know the church would grow. I didn't know if it would last or if I could even do it. But I, I, that just tells me how God puts things in us all that we don't know we have. Well, when I write my books, I'm writing to just the general public. The, I just try to think about the people that I play basketball with and the people I eat lunch with and just uh, everyday people. I try not to make it very, what I'd call churchy, even though I grew up in a pastor's home. I try to make it where it uh, just will resonate with the general public. On Your Best Life Now, I just basically wanted to get my core message out, and that's that God's a good God and that He's for us. And I'd really never published anything on that scale before, and uh, I didn't know it was going to take off like it did. But I really just, I guess the whole motive behind it was another avenue to help people live a better life. Well, what inspired me to write this next book is I believe that we're always growing. In the last three years, um, you know, I've changed, I've grown, I feel like I've gotten, you know, if the word's better or just more effective in what I do. And so I wanted to take that material and, you know, once you, you know, it's kind of hard in one sense to top your best life now. I mean, what do you do if you, if you feel like you're living your best life now? But the concept behind this new book is that we can always improve. We should always be growing. We shouldn't be at the same place next year as we are right now. And it seems like I see a lot of people that get stuck in a rut, either in their attitude or their marriage or even in their career. They think, well, I've gone as far as I can go. But in this new book, I talk about how just practical things we can do to become better. And I think it's things we can do every day. You develop better relationships and better habits and uh, just better thinking patterns. I hope to think that it's very practical that you can take it and use it right away. I don't try to make something complicated or uh, difficult to understand. Most of it is very simple. We already know it's just somebody to remind us and maybe put it in a little different context. Lakewood Church was started in 1959 by my father, and today it's grown into the, one of the largest churches in America, and it's a non-denominational church. By that I mean there's people from all different walks of life, all different denominations. We're not affiliated with one certain group, but we meet now in the former Compact Center. Uh, we moved into this facility in 2005, and it's got a 16,000-seat arena. We spent about $100 million to renovate it and put new sound and lighting and bookstores and children's facility, and uh, it's just a great place to worship. I believe it's one of the premier facilities in the world. The people that come to Lakewood are from all different walks of life. There's all different races. It's probably about 30% white, 30% Hispanic, and 30% African American. It's very equally diverse in that area, but not only in that, it's, it's socially. There's, you know, professional ball players and people that are, you know, had to take the bus to get here. But I think the beauty of it is it's just people don't look at your skin color or your economic status. It's just they're here to worship the Lord. We start each Lakewood service with about 30 minutes of what we call praise and worship. It's contemporary music with uh, a band and an orchestra and a choir and uh, we have some of the premier worship leaders, I feel, in, the, in America. The lighting, the sound is like you'd be maybe at a rock concert. There's about a 10-minute segment in every service after that where we pray for the needs of people. Even though it's a large facility and there may be 10 or 20,000 people there, we have about 500 people that are called prayer partners that during that time of the service you can come down and receive prayer individually. And then uh, Victoria shares maybe 10 minutes and, and I'll share a 30-minute message. We try to leave them every week with not only uh, inspired, but something that they can put into practice. What can I do this week to become better? We do it as a team. I wouldn't be half of who I am if it wasn't for Victoria, because she's sewn into me and 
just seen things in me that I've never seen in myself. And so, matter of fact, she's the one that encouraged me to write the first book. Well, I was amazed because I'd never published a book before Your Best Life Now, and I was just amazed at how the book can go places that the TV doesn't go. It reaches a different audience many times. I never even dreamed now how many people come up and say, well, I've read your book. It used to always be I've seen you on television. We've had a lot of interesting things at the book signings, just uh, getting to meet everyday people. One, one girl, she was probably in her early 20s. Well, she had been estranged from her mother for I may not know the story perfectly, but maybe 10 or 15 years, and her mother watched us on television, and, and she had been watching, and they ended up coming to the book signing together, and it was there where they reconciled. They didn't even know they were both coming. They didn't know they had both read my book, but it's just kind of God brought them together. And they were there in tears. I didn't know what was going on, but they said, we hadn't seen each other in years, and it was just things like that. It's just the way God works, and He uses books and other things to change people's lives. I hope the readers of Become a Better You come away inspired and challenged to never get stuck in a rut and to grow, to become better parents and better employees and just better people in general. I would love to think that they go out challenged and just put some simple principles into practice uh, that can help them enjoy their life more and be a bigger blessing to the people around them.